Good afternoon. I'm Councilmember Peter Ku. I'm the chair of the Committee on Technology. Uh, I want to welcome all of you to our hearing. Uh, today's hearing will focus on four bills. Intro 1152, a local law in relation to requiring an online payment grace period in the event of an electronic system security breach. Intro 1153, a local law in relationship in relation to be requiring a penetration testing protocol. Intro 1154, a local law in relation to encrypting website exchange or transfers. And then lastly, intro 1297, a local law in relation to codifying an office of cyber command. Ensuring the security in cyberspace is essential to our promoting prosperity and protecting your city's critical infrastructure and the privacy of our residents. The internet has become an important component of all aspects of lives. The internet has changed business practices education, government, healthcare, and even the ways in which we, we interact with each other. We now use the internet to book flights, transfer funds from bank accounts, check uh, bus timetables, book car service, pay parking tickets, check weather, and remotely regulate room temperatures in our, in our homes and even using smart pill bottles to take medications. All these require providing personal and private information, and we need to make sure that the information is secure. Therefore, both our critical infrastructures and our daily lives rely on computer-driven and interconnected information technologies. It is the fact that in cyberspace, new vulnerabilities have been revealed and new threats continue to emerge. It is part of our mission to keep our spy, uh, cyberspace safe and secure. And these four bills hope to accomplish just that. I look forward to hearing from the panels today, and I would like to thank the Technology Committee staff for putting together this hearing. I would like to recognize the Technology Committee members, uh, which they are on the way. Yeah. And thank you, and I look forward to hearing uh, the testimony on this bill, on these bills today. And we have Mr. Jeff Brown, New York City Chief Information uh, security and head of cyber command. Welcome to our committee. So do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and answer honestly to committee questions? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. You can start. Yeah. You can start, yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair Koo and members of, of the Committee on Technology. My name is Jeff Brown, and I am New York City's Chief Information Security Officer and Head of New York City Cyber Command. I'm here today to speak with you about the important issue of cybersecurity, specifically with respect to issues associated with the Committee's consideration of four distinct pieces of proposed legislation, Intro 1152, Intro 1153, Intro 1154, and Intro 1297. At New York City Cyber Command, we believe that thoughtful legislation and regulation at the federal, state, and local levels plays a critical role to enhance our collective and increasingly interdependent cybersecurity posture. This is our first time to appear before the committee, and we see today as a welcomed opportunity. Before we turn to the proposed legislation, I'd like to take a moment to provide some context on New York City Cyber Command and the perspective we offer today. 
I would be remiss if I did not mention at the onset the important work protecting the city from cyber threats that predates the creation of New York City Cyber Command. This work was performed by the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, as well as technology and security teams within the agencies themselves. These teams continue today and, and are our strongest partners. Recognizing the importance of cybersecurity to the city and its residents, visitors, and businesses, the mayor built a distinct standalone cybersecurity function that would have the appropriate responsibilities and authorities to apply a uniform, consistent approach to cybersecurity across all city agencies, including DOIT as the core technology services agency. Our plan's foundation rested on the premise that to continue to be the world's leading city, New York must remain the safest and most secure city. As a first step, we needed to establish a mechanism for the city to have a cybersecurity conversation as a peer to the technology conversation and with the agencies delivering critical services each and every day to New Yorkers. In support of this effort, the mayor signed Executive Order 28 on July 11, 2017. It is a concise but thorough document that sets forth the intent, direction, and authority of the city's unique approach to cybersecurity with a clear mission to make New York City a cyber secure place to live, visit, and do business. Under the executive order, we are charged to undertake the following activities with regard to city-owned and managed systems. Ensure compliance with information security policies and standards. Mitigate cyber threats and direct incident response. Mandate deployment of technical and administrative controls. Review cyber-related spending and collaborate with federal and state government agencies and private sector organizations. In addition to Cyber Command's specific mandates under the executive order, I would also like to highlight just one example of how New York City Cyber Command helped define the role of city government in cyberspace, the New York City Secure Initiative. NYC Secure reconceptualizes the role of the city in cyberspace under the principles that cybersecurity is a public safety issue and an essential need of all New Yorkers, and cybersecurity for New Yorkers should protect and respect New Yorkers' privacy. I am pr proud to remind the Council that, in support of the NYC Secure Initiative, New York City Cyber Command released a free mobile threat detection app. This app embodies our NYC Secure principles. It reduces the risk of malicious activity when it's installed on mobile devices, and it was built under the concept of privacy by design. We developed the app to ensure that privacy principles were embedded into the app's code. Similarly, New York City Cyber Command is also working with the agencies to deploy a privacy-centric Wi-Fi security solution in the locations where the city provides free Wi-Fi. The creation of New York City Cyber Command was a critical step to protect our city and prepare for its future. It is a future in which New Yorkers expect our city to rapidly adapt to new ways of engaging in commerce and culture through technology, and this future must be secure. The complexity of cybersecurity coupled with the challenge of preparing to defend against future unknowns is daunting. This committee knows that cyber threats have evolved and are evolving in concerning ways. Cyber threats do not respect international boundaries. Cyber threats do not respect national boundaries. Cyber threats do not respect state boundaries, and cyber threats do not respect local boundaries. And since the inception of New York City Cyber Command, we have routinely dealt with and are currently handling a variety of cybersecurity matters related to the city government ecosystem. Mm -hmm. But I say with confidence that New York City is setting a new standard on how a city addresses these threats. We can't eliminate cyber threats but we can take decisive action to mitigate the risks that these threats will harm the ability of city agencies to deliver critical services, and we can respond quickly to minimize their impact if they do. Accordingly, today presents an opportunity to work together as a city on additional measures to assist our city's preparation. We welcome this and all opportunities to work with the committee on thoughtful legislation that will advance our shared objectives for a safer city. We appreciate the overall objective of the proposed legislation to enhance the cybersecurity of our city. I make the following brief observations with respect to each of the proposed bills and would be delighted to discuss them further and in greater detail following the hearing today. Intro 1152. 
we agree with the premise that people should not incur late fees associated with a system outage. We will work with Council to identify the appropriate agencies that should also be part of this discussion. Intro 1153. This proposed legislation outlines four important cybersecurity objectives. The first, NYC Cyber Command will refer to as vulnerability management. The second, we will refer to as education and awareness. The third, we would refer to as compliance. And the fourth, we would refer to as incident response reporting. While we will continue to support strengthening education and awareness throughout the city's workforce, we are concerned about certain aspects of the proposed legislation, particularly the concept of an immediate reporting requirement during incident response. As currently written, the bill would require us to divert resources from responding to an attack to brief the city council in a matter outside the traditional hearing and oversight processes outlined in the charter, and it may force the public exposure of information that will make the city an easier target of cyber attack. Intro 1154. Website encryption is important, and our partners that do it have made significant progress toward this end. HTTPS has already been implemented on nyc.gov, and we support the committee in moving more city-maintained websites to HTTPS. Intro 1297. We support centralization of authority within city government to manage cyber threats. Our organization, with the authority to establish technical controls with oversight ability and the resources to engage and edu educate across city government is the most effective approach to address the cyber threats we face. Executive Order 28 clearly defines the powers and duties of New York City Cyber Command, acknowledges the unique importance of the cybersecurity of critical infrastructure, and underscores the need to organize around this important issue in a way that best protects all New Yorkers and the services that they rely on each day. Today's committee hearing is a signal to New Yorkers that their government is in firm agreement about the critical importance of cybersecurity. It is a signal to New Yorkers that their government recognizes that partnership can strengthen New York City and that New York City can set an example for others to follow. And in the spirit of our shared responsibility to protect and defend the people of New York City, I want to once more thank Chair Ku and the Committee on Technology for the opportunity to speak today and welcome the discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, before we start questions, we want to acknowledge uh, our committee members who will just join us, Council Member Eric, uh, Council Member Holden, and Council Member Yeager. So thank you for your testimony. First of all, I want to congratulate you on your success in launching NYC Secure, the app. I'm sure that we all uh, like to learn more about your success in protecting New York City and our residents from cyber uh, threats. So um, Executive Order 28 requires New York City Cyber Command to set security policies and standards. How is the process going? Thank you for the question, Chair Ku. The process is going quite well. I would um, reiterate to the committee that the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, predating the creation of NYC Cyber Command, has a standard of policies and associated standards for the security of IT systems. New York City Cyber Command has been working diligently with the Department of Information Technology, Telecommunications, and agencies, learning from those agencies' experiences with the existing policy, and has begun the process of rolling out new policies. Those new policies include incident response and others to come in coming months. Um, these policies are meant to make sure that the authority of NYC Cyber Command to do things like deploy defenses, and conduct incident response is in tight, tight coordination with the agencies themselves and is also making sure that our city has the standards that are industry standard and industry leading to protect our systems from any type of cyber event. Thank you. Can you put the mic a little bit closer to you? I'm sorry. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Better? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So are these policies tailored to a specific agency or uh, they apply to all city agencies? 
The policies are meant as an umbrella for all city agencies. The policies are follow, will be followed by standards and are followed by standards that give more precise guidance on technical controls. What I would like to highlight is agencies themselves have different functions and different technical environments. So we are very, very mindful in working with the agencies to make sure that the umbrella applies appropriately and helps guide them into a better standard. But then we need to be mindful of the different technical environments and associate guidance to them on how to best defend their individual systems. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, Executive Order 28 also requires New York City Cyber Command to ensure compliance with the policies. Uh, is there a mechanism in place to ensure compliance? There are mechanisms to ensure compliance. Some mechanisms are technical and some mechanisms are administrative. New York City Cyber Command is working with agencies to make sure that they take advantage of the most secure ways of, um, of building and maintaining their technical systems. So, so what are the consequences if agencies, they don't comply with these uh, executive order? We are in an active conversation with the agencies about what is really the intent of our cybersecurity conversation today, and that intent is to make sure that we defend those systems against what really is the consequence of concern, and that is the disruption of a system or the stealing of data. And those are the, the, the consequences that we always are mindful about protecting against. Uh, in general, uh, can you like, tell us uh, what are the targets of uh, cyber attacks? So in general, the, if you think about New York City's city government systems, they are not necessarily unlike a highly complicated but very large enterprise environment. So the types of threats that we see today are not unlike the types of threats that enterprises have to deal with each and every day. That's something that our team is incredibly focused on. Some of those threats that are the most common are things like phishing events. Um, that, I think, is a prevalent attack vector, but there are many others. And so we have a defense in depth strategy to make sure we're taking a look at things that happen at other enterprises, learning how to take those learning from the events at those other enterprises and learning to apply that learning against our own defenses to make sure they're enriched um, each and every day. Thank you. Now, yeah. So uh, you have mentioned in your testimony uh, a privacy sensitive Wi-Fi security solution. Uh, what are the risks association associated with using public Wi-Fi? So if I use Wi-Fi in this room, is it safe? No. So the Wi-Fi in public spaces, um, there's two components to the NYC secure approach. One of the components is in any place where uh, the city government of New York is providing public Wi-Fi, we are configuring that Wi-Fi to take advantage of a non-for-profit what's called DNS security solution. The reason why we chose this DNS security solution is it is, just like the app, uh, privacy by design. This solution, if a user uh, connects to that public Wi-Fi terminal, um, will only prevent the user from connecting to a website that is specifically on the internet, placed by the internet, to steal something from that user. It doesn't collect any of the browser information um, from, from that connection. So we wanted to provide a very strong security solution to take a major piece of the attack vector off the table when someone connects to a Wi-Fi. Um, that's one of the measures that we brought to bear at the NYC Secure Initiative. The other is the app, and I'm happy to, uh, to speak to that measure as well. So. Uh uh, would any information be collected from the users? Are you collecting any information from them? No. Hmm. No, it doesn't. Um, for the Wi-Fi solution, again, it's uh, a DNS security solution. The name of it is Quad9. Uh, the thing that I find very interesting about the solution is it isn't just something that can be deployed um, at you know the places where the New York City government uh, provides free public Wi-Fi, but it. The, 
a, any individual who wants to educate themselves about this initiative could take this home and configure their home device to use the same piece of protection. It does not collect the browser history. It only interacts with um, the uh, domain name system in a way so you know, the internet connection is successful. Um, and what is, what is very important to know is it, the only things that it will block are sites that are only put there by criminals and adversaries in order to compromise the device. That's the only thing that, that's the only action it takes. Uh, and again, I, I think that this is a wonderful opportunity to speak with the council about this, um, about this initiative because in many ways we want to inform New Yorkers, educate New Yorkers because this is a tool they could bring home. They could use this tool in their day-to-day -day life and they would, be, they would be safer and it would not be invasive in their privacy. So uh, is the Wi-Fi uh, used um, in all agencies the same? Or say uh, is the li in the library, we have Wi-Fi too, you know, New York City Public Library. So, so are they using the same system like yours? There are different agencies, the library, and other Wi-Fi providers in the city. Uh, from a technical perspective, they are all different systems. Uh, we've been working with the agencies to make sure where they are providing public Wi-Fi, this solution is enabled. We are also working with other places in New York City that provide public Wi-Fi to enable the solution as well, like the libraries. Um, I don't have the data right in front of me, but I know my team has had many conversations with the public Wi-Fi, uh, with the public libraries, and some of them has, have availed themselves of this solution to protect New Yorkers when they, when they access their, their free Wi-Fi. So, uh, recently I went on the subway, I see ads for the new NYC Secure app uh, on the, in the subways. That's They're right. advertising for it, yeah. So can you tell us something about it? Is it available for both Apple and Android uh, systems? That is correct, Chair Tu. It is available for both the Apple and the Android systems. Um, this app, the NYC Secure app, uh, an important note is that we built this app with privacy by design. So at the code level, this app does not collect any private data from a New Yorker's device. It is not capable of collecting that data. My organization does not receive data. Any organization does not receive data. It does not send the data from the device. The thing that the, the app does is really in two categories. One, we've spoken a little bit about Wi-Fi security. It could give you a Wi-Fi alert. What that Wi-Fi alert is saying is that your device is connecting to an unsecured Wi-Fi. Um, as we know, the internet itself is in many ways not a secured place. So what we're reminding a New Yorker, what we're trying to educate a New Yorker to do is be mindful when you have those connections with your device to steer away from sites where you might want to conduct activity that would be of a private nature for you. It could be banking, it could be et cetera. We, uh, so we're reminding New Yorkers to steer away from that. And if you do want to conduct that activity to look for the connection to be HTTPS. That guidance is given right there for the New Yorker. So that's a Wi-Fi, we, we consider that a network type alert. It's not gonna take action on the device, it's just gonna let the New Yorker know. Mm. The other type of alert that comes off the NYC or app is called a device alert. A device alert might indicate that unfortunately, maybe you clicked on a, ma uh, on, on a link in a phishing email, et cetera. Unfortunately, your device has come across um, a, a threat that is the intent is to inject you know, unauthorized code onto your device to try and give an adversary access to it. So then it'll give the New Yorker some advice, maybe turn off the phone, maybe restall from backup. Again, with this type of alert, we're also not taking a direct <coughs> uh, action on the device. We are alerting New Yorkers. We're trying to use the app to make New Yorkers more mindful as they navigate their life in the, you know, along the internet and to steer away from the threats. So how many people downloaded this app already? We've crossed the threshold of 50,000 downloads, wow. which is something okay. my organization is exceptionally proud of. Quite simply, a number of months ago, there were 50,000 less devices in New York City that were safe. And now there's 50,000 more devices on behalf of New Yorkers that are safer. We're very proud of this. Any feedbacks from the users? We've, we have a mechanism through the website. Um, 
uh, secure.nyc for people to send us questions. We've gotten some, some questions about, about the device, uh, about, the, um, about the app, and we've gotten some uh, very positive feedback to you. I'm happy to report. Thank you. So what are the most common threats from, uh, that the New York City residents uh, face daily, you know, in terms of uh, internet and cyber? You know? okay. So I think that residents of the city, visitors, businesses, face many, many different threats as they conduct their life online. Uh, research tells us that the most prevalent type of threat is called you know, a fish, and you know, P-H-I-S-H, a fish. Uh, that's a very prevalent um, uh, vector of an adversary trying to can control the device, take control of the device. Uh, there are some great ways of protecting yourself from that type of vector. Um, and you know, we, we encourage New Yorkers to, to, to avail themselves of those protections. So uh, in general, now how do we protect our systems you know, at home? You know, we just buy an internet antivirus software? You know? So from a protect systems at, at, at your home, I would uh, point- uh, uh, at, Small business. At small businesses. Um, I would point a small business also towards NYC Secure. Uh, a small business can configure its Wi-Fi towards um, the DNS solution, Quad9. A small business can put the NYC Secure app on its devices. I would also encourage a small business to uh, research a concept called multi-factor authentication. Uh, that is another wonderful way of making sure that your email accounts and the other aspects of your business um, uh, have additional layers of security. I would highlight that, of course, you know, in, in a landscape where the threats are always evolving, you, know, you cannot eliminate every aspect of this risk, but there are w great ways to help add defensive layers, even in a small business or even at home. We're trying to make sure we're engaging New Yorkers in that conversation. Yes. Uh, Council Member Orich, you have a question? Holden, yeah. Holden. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> no, not quite. Well, yeah. right. um, what, now, just, um, do you, anybody keep track on how many times we get, we're, we're attacked? I mean, uh, certainly with uh, your, the city system, but um, do, do, do we have a number on that uh, in your office? So first, the good, cyber attacks, yes. First, good afternoon, uh, Councilmember Holden. Um, mm -hmm. Happy to be here today. Right. Uh, we do keep track of, of these types of threats. Uh, one of the activities within New York City Cyber Command is a 24-7 security operations center. That security oper operations center is part and parcel of a capability that we call our threat, our threat management function. That threat management function each and every day is monitoring those city systems, has a, number of ability, uh, ha has a number of abilities to understand the amount of attacks, the types of attacks, uh, the things that are blocked, the things that require further investigation, and you know, act accordingly. Um, so that, that's how we handle the volume. I would say to a certain extent, New York City city government systems is part and parcel from a size perspective of you know, other very large sort of global companies, it's, got, it's this size, right? Um, and so we see accordingly the amount of activity that you would in that type of environment. I'd also um, note, to, um, uh, note to council that if you think about the internet, the internet itself is continually communicating in many, many ways. So sometimes thinking about the sheer number um, can be daunting, but it's really the, the, the type of thing that is incredibly important to be mindful of, because if we understand the type, then we can take that type and make sure our defenses are set accordingly to defend against that type. Yeah, I, I, almost a day doesn't go by where we don't hear of uh, uh, phishing, you know, going on by, by so many, uh, I mean, I, there, it's probably, thousands or if not millions of people trying to, to fish and and uh, do you have like um, wh what is is uh, obviously a lot of it is, is from overseas um, do we have a country that's leading um, I think I know the answer to this but in cyber attacks um, that we that we can actually track so in my program we think much less about the who than the how the, as I as I noted a moment ago the types of attacks that we see 
are global. And to your point, as we look at sort of news cycles in cybersecurity, we see all kinds of different activity. It could be because of a fish, it could be something is stolen, it could be something is interrupted. So what my program tries to do is leave the adversary attribution, the who, to other uh, practitioners and very much concentrate on understanding the how, because once we know the how, we can apply that to our defenses to make sure we're safe. Right. And, and certainly the losses are, are, are tremendous um, when, when people in the phishing and, and, and uh, cyber attacks. Do we ever catch anybody? Um, I mean, if, I know your office, but not your office, but do we ever find out that there's a network of, of scammers that are out there and, we, and you bust them? Or so I, I would point the council member to a number of activities that uh, aren't the purview of NYC Cyber Command, but uh, Department of Justice and other entities are involved very much in, in the attribution and are working accordingly against that objective. Yes, but we don't, we, uh, let's say my son just got his uh, identity stolen uh, and, you know, we don't know how it happened. We just, you know, but it, it usually goes to the banks. Does, does, uh, does that go to law enforcement too? Who, who should, like if I'm, I'm somebody, a fish, I, I'm, I'm a victim of phishing, um, I, you, normally the banks get that information. Do we have an office where we can call law enforcement? So you, you are correct. I, um, in the financial service sector, right. there is an incredibly tight relationship with law enforcement, and that tight relationship also exists with NYC Cyber Command. We are in close partnership and coordination with NYPD um, on almost a daily, if not weekly basis. And a lot of that is because not necessarily um, attribution. Most of it is because of information sharing. There are many different channels within the cybersecurity community to understand, as I said, the how. And we want to make sure we are connected to every single one of those channels. Right. We, we, we let the, the who for them, but the how we want to learn from. So we are very, very connected right, I to get those that. channels. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. We also joined by Council Member Lander. Good afternoon. Council Member Lander, you have questions? Uh, yes, Chair Ku, thank you very much. Um, and I apologize for coming in late, so hopefully I'm not trotting ground. Oh, I'm sorry. Is, is, if Council Member Yeager was here before me, yes, that's fine with me. Oh, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so hopefully I'm not trotting ground you already uh, trod, but um, uh, um, it's nice to see you here, and thank you for your work. Can you just first um, tell me sort of a, a little more about how the org chart, uh, where you sit, uh, you know, I have been grappling with, you know, because we heard, you know, we've got a chief technology officer, we've got a commissioner of do it, we have, you know, the mayor's office of data analytics, which sits at the mayor's office of operations, and I'm having a, a little bit of a hard time just understanding kind of, I mean, we want all those things, and we definitely want uh, cyber command, and I assume you work with a range of, obviously, a whole much broader range of agencies, but, can you just like, I don't know, who do you report to and how do you relate to those other key technology functions? Happy to. Um, the executive order uh, outlines really uh, a, the unique place that New York City Cyber Command has and the reason why that um, w it was put into, I guess, existence that way is for a very concrete reason. Um, the conversation around cyber risk now, now in the city with the creation of New York City Cyber Commands allows us to have that conversation at City Hall. As written in the executive order, uh, the organization officially reports to the first deputy mayor. We do work exceptionally closely each and every day with City Hall at the deputy mayor level. Um, but the conversation about cyber risk can happen there along with, as a peer, to a conversation around technology strategy and technology risk along with the conversation represented by the agencies around the service that they provide. It's within that context that you can really take a look at all the different ways that cyber can, uh, is, is a multi sort of disciplinary, multi-function, multi-technical conversation. It goes beyond just technology. It goes beyond sometimes just business function because it represents a safety risk. So to your question, from a hierarchical perspective, an organizational perspective, um, at, we now s sit in a place where we can have that conversation as a peer office or to the agencies providing services or technology to across the city landscape. Um, and then beyond that, so that's reporting into City Hall. Beyond that, we break down very much like any enterprise cybersecurity program. 
Um, I would be a little hesitant to go into too much specifics, but at a very high level, um, we have a function, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, a threat management function. You can think of that as very much the team that does 24-7. They do the detection response. We have a function called security, uh, arch uh, security sciences, and that does the engineering and architecture for our tools and does advisory services as we try and uh, uh, raise the waters of the technology across all, all, all the city landscape. We have a function called urban technology. That's a very interesting function, perhaps not something that you would normally see in other enterprises, but that's very much a forward-looking function to think about as the, as, the cities, as the city landscape proliferates with the devices, we have to think very mindfully about uh, what types of devices uh, the city operates. So that function, an urban technology uh, perspective, is leading that conversation. And then we have business functions and governance functions, um, just like you would see in, in, in any other office here in the city. All right, so I, uh, that's very helpful. Thank you. And I guess a couple questions more about how, um, you know, how some different functions relate. Um, you know, so I know that we've, we've had a dialogue in the past around the Link NYC okay. and how, you know, th and this may be about protecting New Yorkers' data privacy and paying attention to, you know, how they're using it. Obviously, there's a contract and some of that was negotiated there, but you know, there's all kinds of things evolving over time. So is that a conversation that you're a part of or is that because, I don't know whether it was Do It or DCAS that actually now, you know, negotiated the contract with Link? Um, you know, how would, you know, uh, is that an issue you guys would, would deal with or is that in somebody else's domain? So with regards to Link, I'm first like proud to report to the committee that they are uh, adopting the Quad 9 solution. So, and so I love Link, so this is not a like, I'm worried about them, it just is a place where these issues exist in, in, in you know, in real time, so. That's right, so, I, so we work pretty, very closely with uh, Do It on making sure that the security policy standards, the principles that we're bringing across all of the umbrella agency systems are applied in like all their business matters, uh, and Link would be inclusive of that. Um, and that, that it would be the same answer to any technology system that an agency is uh, looking to adopt. It goes back to, as I um, outlined, the concept of the conversation of cyber risk with technology, risk and strategy with business function. That's, the, that's sort of the table setting of the conversation where we're influential when it comes to cyber risk. The threat management function does have um, you know, the, the executive order authority to mandate technical controls. So that's another umbrella type cyber defense that, that we are the, the sort of the central recipient and actor on that. Um, and then I guess my last question, you know, the thing that I think of as paying attention to the data privacy issues for New Yorkers in relationship to government, or, you know, we are collecting lots of data, so let's say I'm, well, I don't know what it is, I'm, you know, I deal with parking tickets or whatever. I'm an agency that in one way or another is collecting a lot of New Yorkers' uh, data. Um, in a, you know, I, I, you, it sounds like, are, um, you're definitely working with me on kind of thinking about the threats that someone might come in and try to get at that. How about the questions about just how we as a city ought to be thinking about that and, you know, what our algorithms do and where we might expose people to, um, you know, as well, you know, I, I'm actually pretty happy right now that the speed camera and red light camera data is out there for all to see. I mean, it's by license plate. We don't know the name of the individual with the license plate, but every one of those tickets winds up getting aggregated, and there's actually a great Twitter bot that you can, when you see a, a driver do something horrific or obnoxious, you take a picture of their license plate and you tweet it at, how's my driving? And you get back this record of all of their violations of our cameras. Um, and, you know, I actually want to use that data to start a more reckless driver accountability program, but for now there's like some public accountability, you know, but I'm sure there are places where people would say, you know, um, doing that, you know, is a form of doxing or, um, I mean, that certainly is a form of doxing, but, you know, wh where's the line, you know, how, and so if I'm a, 
if I'm a, you know, a CIO in an agency, are you guys working with me on that set of data privacy questions or does that sit somewhere else in the city's technology firmament? So if I may have a number of like brief uh, data points on, uh, on, on the question. First, of course, there are a number of different uh, stakeholders in that conversation. There is a chief privacy officer. There is the agency that's building that te that technology. There is a you know office for you know the data strategy for the city. There's do it. So there's a number of stakeholders in that sort of multifaceted conversation. Um, an another brief point: when it comes to data security, that is a discipline within cybersecurity. So we're working with agencies to make sure that data data and systems that hold data are identified. Um, and that the appropriate controls, encryption, and others are applied to those data sets. And then third, when it comes to privacy, I would really point the council member no farther than the NYC Secure Principles. From a cybersecurity perspective, we have said for New Yorkers that cybersecurity as an essential service, as something that is a public safety issue, needs to protect privacy and respect privacy as well. We have a belief that cybersecurity can uphold privacy and doesn't in no way, shape, or form should invade a New Yorker's privacy. So that's the principles of my office. That is great. And so I guess maybe I should have known we had a chief privacy officer, but I, I, that person sits where? Uh, I believe, though I'm happy to get back to the council on this, I believe that that is within the mayor's office of operations. Okay. That might be an interesting follow-up hearing for us to talk with the chief privacy yeah, officer yeah. about some of the so those any questions more as well. questions thank from you. members okay. no seeing none mr Brown, thank you very much for your test oh i'm sorry i didn't turn on the mic yeah so i want to thank you for your testimony and thank you for your dedication and leadership uh, thank you chair ku and council members for having me today are there any more uh, public participations seeing none this meeting uh, is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. You always come in the, the right time, huh? This was, you know, <laughs> I try. <laughs> this was just luck today. Yeah. I,